We're here at the Lieutenant Governor's Mansion with Dr. Jesse Sagawa. Dr. Sagawa, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, where do I start? I was born in Malawi uh, in a town called Blantyre. Uh, it is found in the southwestern, uh, in the southern part of Malawi. And I studied uh, in various schools in Malawi, but I ended up at the University of Malawi Chancellor College, and I chose to study literature and history, and ultimately specialized in studying literature. Now, what got you interested in literature? Was it something you did as a kid, or? Yes, um, having come from a family where both parents were in education, uh, we had a lot of books. So we had access to different types of literature and when I, came, when I went to school, I followed my passion, which was of course literature, various types of literature. And ultimately, um, I became part of the staff at the University of Malawi. Um, in the end, I uh, came to study in Canada. Uh, under the sponsorship of the Canadian Commonwealth Scholarship. Wow. Now, so, I would just like to say that there is nothing more important than a house full of books. As a fellow poet and black writer myself, my mother always had books in every single room. So that's also helped me grow a love of literature. Now, this Canadian Commonwealth Scholarship you mentioned, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. Um, there are a number of Commonwealth scholarships. Uh, there is British Commonwealth, there is Canadian Commonwealth, and then there is the Australian Commonwealth. Well, I happen to be lucky enough to get a Canadian Commonwealth scholarship. My coming to New Brunswick surprised me too, but what happened is a colleague uh, in the Department of English had studied at the University of New Brunswick and he spoke highly about it. When I was coming to, to do my master's, I had a choice between studying in uh, Britain or Canada or the United States, but we felt that we needed more content from Canada because we had a lot of people that specialized in uh, British literature and American literature, but we did not have many that had studied Canadian literature. Well, I would just like to give a thank you to the person that brought you to our humble province. And uh, I'm curious, what are some unique traits of Canadian literature that differentiate it from American literature or British literature? Okay, I think for me, one of the areas of interest was uh, the fascination with space. Mm. Uh, a lot of writers are fascinated by the size of this great country, and it often comes up in their writing. Uh, of course, when you're dealing with size, uh, especially uh, a huge country, there's also the sense of alienation, mm. uh, the snow, uh, comes up a lot in writing, and understandably so, because <laughs> uh, as you know, we do spend uh, close to six months uh, with snow sometimes. Yeah, and a lot so, of alienation shoveling our driveways every yeah, January. <laughs> yes, yes. And so that uh, is uh, something that comes up a lot. How could the city and province help facilitate finding a proper space. Okay, um, I'll start by talking about finding the space. I know that there are a number of places mm. that are not currently being used and uh, maybe through the generosity of the province and maybe the city, mm. maybe they could identify a space that we could uh, have. And what I envision are like opportunities for the people uh, of Fredericton and New Brunswick 
African labor is the most undervalued labor, and for Canada to be picking the best and treating them the worst. I mean, we're sitting in the city council chambers in the capital city of this province in New Brunswick. What would you say to these city councillors right now for how they can help? Um, I think one area where they can help is to ensure that uh, pl places that employ people, first of all, that there is representation in as many places as possible, places of employment, but also ensure that when those people are employed, people are not just paying lip service to diversity, mm. that they make sure that that diversity doesn't come at the expense of the people that they have employed. I will never fully be able to understand why they are told that in order to come here, they must be the creme de la creme. But when they get here, they are reduced to doing things that they did not plan for in their future. Uh, they did not see that uh, happening. And sometimes they are frustrated because the people they leave behind have expectations that having somebody living in Canada means that their needs will now be met. Dr. Sagawa, can you describe your village, please? Yes, I came from a very nice village. Uh, we were surrounded by neighbors, but at the same time, we were a bit set off from our neighbors. And was this Blantyre? Or I didn't catch no, the name. this was in Mulanje. Mulanje? Mulanje, okay. yes. I was born in Blantyre, but after some years, my parents moved to our home district of Mulanje, in, uh, still in the southern region of Malawi. And could you describe what that looked like? Oh my word, it was beautiful. Our home was near the main road. And if you looked to the east, there was this beautiful Mulanje Massif, big mountain and uh, you could see some of the rivers on it. It was quite an interesting place to live because uh, the people lived the principle of it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. We would like our community to build its capacity because we are much stronger when we work together than when we work separately. Together we can do, as someone said, Together, we can do much more than any one of us could do individually. So, as the elders say, one hand washes the other. Thank you. Thank you very much.